Welcome in, I'm Artris, and in this video, we're gonna be going over Bonnie, a new leader from OP07 in the color green that says, when the opponent attacks once per turn, you may pay one Dawn, rest up to one of your opponent's leaders or characters. So a very strong effect that only for one Dawn, you can either rest like a strong body that might present a threat to you or a leader uh, if the leader has an ability that you do not want that leader ability to get off. So this is a very strong card. The way I think you're supposed to build this deck is very defensive, a lot of blockers, and then eventually hiding behind the eight cost Captain Kid, uh, which was from OP01, huge menace to society. Uh, and this deck definitely thrives by running it. And there's some new additions from OP07 that really make this deck, I think, thrive. It almost feels like green has a little bit of a revitalization with Bonnie. But before we get into the deck list, if you find anything in this video useful or informative, please make sure to drop a like and a sub. Helps out the channel immensely. And additionally, if you'd like to talk about the One Piece card game outside of the YouTube comments, please make sure to join the Discord. The link is in the description below. So starting off, we have four of the five cost Cavendish from EB01. This is an on play when attacking. If your leader has a Supernova's type, which Bonnie does, it's a Supernova and Bonnie Pirates. Then if there are no other Cavendish on the field, set up to two of your Dawn cards as active. So essentially this is a three cost, 6k body uh, with uh, the ability, you know, that's actually pretty pretty insane if you think about the value you're getting there. You can then use the one Dawn to swing with Bonnie and then leave one Dawn up for the ability. Uh, so a lot of this deck, as you can see, is going to be supernovas that will also in a way allow you to have the one Dawn up. So Cavendish definitely feeds into that and we see that from EBO1. It's definitely a strong card. If you haven't gotten your copies for Bonnie yet, definitely make sure to get it. Because this card, I think, not necessarily like a staple for this deck, but very, very strong. Then we're running for Scratchman Apu. This is a 2K counter supernova from EB01. It's an on play, rest up to one of your opponents cost two or less characters. You're not really gonna use the effect uh, to be very honest with you. It, the most part is a 2K counter that is searchable with your Bonnie one cost searcher. So that is a supernova, which most of the cards in the deck are. Then we're running Ezo, which is a 2K counter. That's an on play, rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less. Sometimes you need to be able to rest an opponent's character and Ezo is definitely great at doing that, especially if it's a blocker and you need to get through for maybe like a lethal hit or uh, taking care of something on the board that the blocker would stop. So Ezo is definitely great for that, but but I think for the most part, you're gonna to wanna to hold it in your hand as 2Ks. The way that I've been playing the deck is you basically take a lot of hits, uh, you stack up your hand to a fair amount of counter, then you hide behind blockers and you also throw down your kid so that your opponent then has to start swinging into the kid and you can defend it easily if you've taken all of the hits up to that point, especially uh, when you have a bunch of 2Ks in hand, it's very easy to defend. Uh, the kid that I've been talking about from OP01 is an eight cost uh, supernova and it's dawn times one opponent's turn. If this character is rested, your opponent cannot attack anything other than characters named Eustace, Captain Kid. And then activate main once per turn, you may rest this character, play one character card with a cost of three or less from your hand. So what you'll do with this is usually on nine dawn, you can throw this down uh, and then with it, use its ability to put out a blocker, either a Rosanante or a uh, Barto right here. Uh, and then put the one Dawn underneath the uh, Captain Kid, and then your opponent has to swing into an 8K body. Uh, so basically making your leader 8K, So which is really nice. Uh, and this is a very defensive deck. So, so once again, you're hiding behind blockers and trying to defend the 8 cost as much as possible. Uh, Kid is easier to kill nowadays uh, past OP01, now that there's a lot of removal effects, but that's the reason why we're running four of this two cost Rosinante from OP05, which is a blocker. And it says on the opponent's turn, if one of the other rested characters would be KO'd, you may trash this character instead. So it will prevent a uh, at least one KO effect on the kid. So your opponent has to do two KO effects in a single turn in order to get rid of it. I skipped over this, but this is also a very important card for the deck, which is the 10 cost. Do Flamingo on play, a total of up to three of your opponent's rested characters or leaders do not become active during your opponent's next refresh phase. So it's the boss monster of the deck. So after people have swung into the eight cost kid, you can then play this down and then freeze some of those units and just establish your dominance at that point. Because if you have the eight cost kid and then you also have the 10 cost Do Flamingo on the board, it's really hard for your opponent to come back from that. Then we're running four of Hody Jones, which is an OPO six card. It's rush and then on play. Rest up to a total of two of your opponent's characters 
and or dawn then put the top of your life cards into your hand so this is a very strong card to play if you have zero life and you're needing to go for lethal uh, you can also use this to just draw a card from your life and then have a, uh, a unit that rushes and swinging into something that's been rested which is really nice as you can tell there's a, a huge theme here with resting uh, your opponent's stuff and so being able to swing into the rested stuff essentially is a way to starve their hand uh, or just get bodies off the board which is really nice then I'm running two of the Zoro. This is a great threat against yellow, especially in Nell. When this hits the board, the only way they can answer this is with Raigo. And so if they don't have a Raigo in hand uh, and this is allowed to swing, uh, you are probably, not saying it's guaranteed, but you're probably winning that game. Uh, it is a, it's a threat alone that is hard to answer for a lot of decks. And if it goes unchecked, yeah, it, it will definitely win matches. Uh, then I'm running four of a new card from OPO7, your Rouge. Uh, this is an, a blocker and end of turn set up to one of your Dawn cards is active. So on your four Dawn turn, great to play down, have a blocker on the field, and then be able to use your leader ability uh, the following turn while also using all of your Dawn efficiently. It's also a supernova, can be searched out by the one cost. Then we have another new card from OPO7, which is the five cost Bonnie. It's an on play up to one of your opponent's rested characters or Dawn. Do not become active during their next refresh phase. So this will be a miniature 10 cost Doflamingo, or it can be a Magellan uh, to prevent your opponent from using one of their Dawn. And if they're going to 10, for instance, if you're going against like a Katakuri uh, and you rest one of their Dawns, they're going to 10, then uh, they cannot 10 cost Big Mom for that next turn, which is really annoying for them. So this will be great for that. Now, this is a card you might want to cut uh, for other additions, but I think that with it being a new card, I want to test it out, see how it does. I am running four of, and I think it's fair. It's like it's a, it's a 1K counter at worst, and the effect, if you're going first, you can get this down on curve and be able to slow your opponent down by a little bit, which is nice. And then Basil Hawkins, another new card from OPO7, another supernova. It says, if your leader has the supernova in its type, this character gains blocker. And then once per turn, if this character were to be removed from the field by one of your opponent's effects, you may instead rest one of your opponent's characters. So this card is very sticky, hard for your opponent to remove. They have to, if they're playing black, use two KO effects in a single turn. Uh, if they are playing red, purple law, it's almost guaranteed that they cannot remove it from the field. It's very hard because uh, obviously their removal is from one effect. And so this will just kind of negate that. Uh, and it's very difficult for Red Purple Law to remove it. So once it sticks on the field, it pretty much is staying there for the rest of the game, unless you choose to use it as a blocker. Then we're running two of a new card from OPO7, another Barto. This is a blocker. Uh, once again, we're chock full of blockers here. Uh, your turn once per turn, if a character is rested from your own effects, draw one card, then trash one card from your hand. So this will be great to use with Kid because you can use this to rest, uh, and then this will help whenever you do use this to cycle a card. Uh, I believe that it also works with uh, the Hody Jones. It doesn't specify if it's your opponent or you. Uh, it just says if a character is rested from your own effects. So Hody Jones, I believe, hits that effect. But of course, we have a lot of blockers in this deck, and this is not necessarily the best blocker in the world to play. It is searchable, and you can play it out uh, with your kid. But I think because uh, we have a fair amount of other blockers, I'm only running two for this. And then the Bonnie Searcher is a must in this deck as a four of. Uh, it's a pay one Dawn, activate main. You may rest this card. Look at up to five cards from the top of your deck. Reveal up to one Supernova type card and add it to your hand. Then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So this will be able to find a majority of the deck. Uh, the only cards that it can't really find will be like your Izo, your Zoro, uh, your Doflamingo, and your Hody. Also the Rosinante, but all the other important key pieces you can find with it especially your 2k counters like the Scratchman Apu and then this Scratchman Apu uh, from Starter Deck 2, uh, which this effect isn't really useful. It's just a 2k counter. Um, so yeah, overall, this deck is all about resting your opponent's characters, uh, controlling the board as best as possible, keeping the board to a limited state, and then hiding behind an 8-cost kid with all a bunch of blockers to prevent kid from being KO'd. And eventually, hopefully, establish a Zoro to go in for lethal. So yeah, it's a great deck overall. I think that it has a lot of potential to do some damage in the meta when it comes to like treasure cups and online regionals uh, or offline regionals as well. So yeah, I'm excited to see how the deck does overall in the meta, but in the meantime, let's take it into the sim and see how it does. All right, going against a Nell, I want to see if I can find a, well, 
Kid is very good here. I also want to see if I can find a Zoro, but obviously that's not up to me. I think if I'm going against a Nell, I don't really want to swing into them too much. I kind of want to take as many hits as possible. <laughs> so many Doflamingo, or <laughs> the Rosinantes. Uh, Hawkins is great. We can take the Hawkins, and then next turn what we'll do is we'll play the Rouge, and then into a Hawkins, into a Kid. Kid might be answered. We're not going to swing into their stuff, though, because if we swing into them... Uh, they have the incentive to play out the uh, Rigo to be able to take care of some of our bigger bodies. I might want to bump up the. I might want to bump up the Zoro count. I was playing it at four, and I really liked it at four. But ten drop is also something I really like, so that's fine. Hmm. Well, this might get uh, Hawkins, or this might get Hawkins. It might, might get, uh, what is it? What is it, five Godotsu'd? If it gets Godotsu'd, it, it gets Godotsu'd. Well, what can you do? The next turn, though, we'll have Hawkins, and they can't do anything to that. That's for sure. Oh, I, maybe if they don't have anything on board. No, that's not true. If they put, like, I was thinking, oh, they could go, like, Yamato. Okay, so they don't have Godatsu. This is beautiful for us. Them stacking Dawn early is not smart, by the way. <laughs> um, okay, cool. We'll use the card action, and we'll rest the leader, and we'll just, we'll take the hit, because we don't care. We want to take as many hits as we can against this leader. The next turn, we'll play out the Hawkins. Uh, swing into the Shura. We just want to control the board to the best of our ability. Giving Anel cards is not what we want to do. Now we have two blockers down. We can throw down the kid. I actually will do that. I'm going to throw down the kid and then rest the kid, but not use the ability because uh, I don't think I can. Rest the kid to bring out the Rosinante. And then if they have a Raigo, which ultimately we're wanting them to use the Raigo so they can trash three cards, we can just use the two cost. But their, I guess their ideal play would be like Yamato. But then Yamato, if they swing now, they can't Yamato it, which is good. Seven cost a nail. Yeah. Ah, that's a bit of a pain. Use the leader ability, take the hit. That's fine. Ooh. Uh, that one's rough. Like, we, we're not going to be able to take care of this in Nell for sure. Let's go here. Uh, use this to play out this. Uh, and we're not going to be able to... Like, we can't do anything about this, right? We can't put Dawn underneath it. We could go, like, Bonnie, rest the... Keep the Anel rested. That could be something. We want to take as many hits as we can, because we still want to see if we can get that 9-cost Zoro. In a turn where, like, maybe we go kid into a Nell, like we swing nine and seven. See what they do. Okay, so they're resting. Interesting. Um, can't swing with that. And if they swing here, we just block with the Hawkins. Yeah, I think that's fine, right? I figured they might do that. They The smart play would have been to get rid of the Yerush, because then, like, I can't restand my Dawn. Uh, we'll just use card action. Boom. You know what's actually probably the best play here? 
Swing seven. We're just getting cards out of hand. Uh, swing eight. And then we play the 10 drop. I was thinking about like, oh, how can we get rid of this? But since all three of these are rested, we can just use the 10 drop to suspend these. And then they can only play one body next turn. Okay, they're getting rid of cards in hand. That's what we want. Cool. We're not swinging into life because we don't care to swing into life. We'll play this down, boom, boom, boom. And then pass the turn, one up. Yeah, this is really good for us. Uh, what they might do here is they might like play the 10 drop just to heal up a life. We're kind of like stalling the best we can. We want to stall this game out so that we can find our 9 drop. We want to take care of these bodies on the board. Yeah, that's fine. Katakuri's fine. Let's go 11 to 9. See if they'll counter out. If they counter out of this, um, what do we do next? We could go like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go nine into a Nell. They'll probably like trash a life. And then we play Bonnie and then Bonnie will just keep this rested. Yeah, that's fine. Freeze, uh, end the turn, restand. So yeah, they got rid of our kid. That's like one of the answers they do have for it. Not the worst thing in the world, though. And it did heal us, so we are more comfortable taking that life even further. So what they'll probably do is swing Katakuri. Katakuri will uh, ideally go for life. If they stack two on, we will have to protect it. We'll just block with the Rosinante. Uh, actually, actually, I don't know. Because if we do that, that opens us up to Rygo. And I'm going to be honest, in a position like this as a Nell, when I'm getting starved out, <laughs> I might just Rygo just to like get down to one and get rid of a body on the board. But I, they can't because I have the two drop right here. So they're in a little bit of a dilemma for sure. I think we're, we're chilling. We're like uh, not in the driver's seat per se, but we're about to be there. As soon as we get one... If we get like one more eight cost kid, or if we get, I don't know, like a, like the, the Zoro for sure definitely gets us there. Let's use this. Uh, no blocks. We'll take that. Let's see what we can get out of this. Ooh, that's also another good draw. Um, I think we go like 10. And I don't think we're gonna, I mean, I, I hate to get rid of this Bonnie, but she did her job. So let's just do this, lock it down and then pass. And then we can start picking their board apart with the 10 drop. Yeah, once again, every time that we're able to stall for a turn, it gets us one card closer to our Zoro. Nice. They don't have the... Uh, they don't have the rush on it. Uh, let's go here.
There's no way they counter out of this, right? I mean, they might. They actually might. <laughs> Crazy thing. Uh, they might be considering it. Let's go here. They'll use the effect. And then I'm not afraid to just stack eight on here. The fact that they're, yeah, they're definitely considering this. That's crazy. We'll go nine. Okay. 10. Um, there's no reason to do this. We can't. So <laughs> that's why we left the one up. We will probably take the hit from the ace. We could also block out as well. Just have to be careful because if we block with the ace or if we block with this two drop, once again, it opens us up to being Rygode, which we do not want. But yeah, this match has been very strategic as far as like when to attack. We, As you've seen, I have not like swung a single time at life. It's always just swung at bodies, established a board, take the hits. Like you're a five life leader, you're tanky, you're fine. You should be able to effectively just take as many hits as you can, sit behind blockers. They did get rid of our eight costs, but we also were able to establish two 10 drops, which is very nice for us. This following turn will be a little bit awkward for us because um, we our board is full. Like <laughs> what do we get rid of? I really like this card. We can always establish another one. Ah, did they use it? They used it. They used it. Uh, we're going to use the card action for sure. <laughs> That's great. That's amazing. I thought they were probably going to do that uh, at some point. I think they may have either they drew into it right now or they waited too long to use that effect. But as soon as the first 10 drop came down and they're at four life, they probably should have used it at that point, to be quite honest, because, uh, I mean, sure, trashing three cards sucks, but you can, as a Nell, just get that back with, like, Yamato, Ace. So, yeah, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> that's great. I was like, wait, where did their life go? Of course. The Raigo. So here, ooh, that's good. That's pretty good. That's a solid play. Take that. Uh, we're just going to go like 10 here. Get the last card out of hand if it's a counter. Okay. Go seven here. Are they using the effect? Oh! Uh, I think we can just do this, right? We can go like seven. We'll go seven to life, because that's a guaranteed hit. We can swing 10. And they'll, they'll take it, unless it's like a trigger that stops us from going for a game. Because we can actually use this, right? Go 10 here. I'm not like potentially trying to go for game, but I mean, if they're going to give it to me, then yes. The other option is to stall out one more turn and play the eight cost in case like they do something here to the four cost, which they did not. So then we just go for game. GG. Yep. That's how you do it. It's a slow grind against Anel, but it's very possible. So Lucci is going to be one of our harder matchups, to be quite honest. We need to find the six cost, which we have. Um... Bonnie's not necessarily the best, though. We need to be as aggressive as possible. Cavendish is fine. Uh, let's go five. Two. Not that it really matters. I think next turn, what we can do is play Cavendish. I think this just suspends a dawn, right? Ugh. Ennis Lobby. No. <laughs> That sucks. We'll take it and pass. Okay. Counter out. Uh, this is actually going to be our hardest matchup, I think. Lucci, just like any black deck, does well against green. 
The only real way that you can do this effectively is if they don't have an answer to a Zoro, if you have a Zoro, or if you like play really aggressively with like a Hody Jones, that's also another option. But the fact that they have Ennis Lobby is not good for us. It just means that like, ah, uh, is this a Luchi turn? Oh, uh, I see, I see, I see. Go five there, go here. I'm gonna go nine at face. I think this next turn is probably, what, Moria? We could throw it on the Hawkins. We can probably go like Cavendish. Maybe not. <laughs> Instant minus two to Cavendish, okay. Ouch. I think that was fine because we want to get rid of the Brook, to be quite honest. Uh, and clearing their board like that is fine. Uh, I don't think I want to take this life. To be I think I'm going to counter out. No blocker. Boom. Stussy in the yard. Rebecca. Suru. Okay. Into the brook. Ouch. So we're going to be a nine. Go here. They'll probably block with the Rebecca. Oh, they don't block with the Rebecca. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll just go seven at face. Counter out. And then pass. Hawkins is a tough one for them to deal with, for sure. I swung with the Hody Jones first because I wanted to guarantee a kill on the Brook. The problem is, though, like if they blocked with the Rebecca, then we'd be in a little bit of trouble. But then that also means that we can just freely swing into it. I just wanted to see what they would do. I guess maybe swinging seven first would have been fine. Use the card action. Uh, we'll rest this. No blocks. Two. Is this a Stussy? Please. Please don't. <laughs> Please leave my guys alone. Yeah, this, this sucks. <laughs> this matchup's awful, man. It's, it's just like unbearable because like with the two cost event, like that's the hardest part of this. Okay, what are they, they get a spandum, I guess? That's fine. I think they're just trying to put as many bodies on the board. Is that what they're doing? Makes sense. Hmm, I guess we go like five, eight, six, that, uh, and then pass. They'll probably swing into the Hody. We'll rest one of the Morias, I suppose. But yeah, this is, <laughs> oh, this is rough. I think our best bet is just to like establish as many Hawkins as possible, but then it's like, even then, they have all the answers to everything, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing's surviving this board for sure. Luchi, that's fine. If they establish one more blocker, we could be in trouble, I suppose. What I'm trying to think to do here is like, wh what, they play Rebecca? If they play Rebecca, well, they have four Dawn here. Use this, boom, we'll take the hit. Oh, why now? Although it probably wouldn't have mattered to be fair. Are they going for game here? I think we have to, I think we have to like establish a game after, like, rough.
How many 2Ks do they have in the trash? One, two, three, four, five, six. And this deck usually runs anywhere from 10 to 12. What are the chances that they have? I mean, it's probably pretty high. So these three Dawn are instantly gone because we rest this. Uh, if we go seven, nine, nine, eight. We go eight, eight, nine, Nine. This is, I mean, this is a Hell Mary. This is a Hell Mary if I've ever done one. Eight. Nine. Uh, yeah, they probably have it. They probably have it. There's no way they don't. Yeah. Why would you use that? <laughs> they have it. What? Oh my god, no way! I actually didn't think I had that. That's insane. That is actually insane. I was being a huge pessimist there because I didn't think I'd be able to get through, but that's that's insane. Also, I've been I've been running this as a tech. I'm surprised to see somebody else run it. I actually like this Rush Luchi in this deck, so yeah, wow. We barely squeaked that one out. The, I, the only reason why there was even a slight chance we could have won that is because they had six 2Ks used already. Um, but yeah, sometimes the deck runs bricks. We got lucky. We got lucky for sure. Okay, Kaido is an interesting deck choice. Uh, it does get a little bit of support in this set. Um, they chose to go first. I think we're going to mulligan this hand. Even though the hand wasn't awful... Ideally, Hawkins is really good against their deck because they have difficulty taking care of it. It's one of those cards that if they play the 10 cost, uh, we can keep this on the board at least. So let's just go Bonnie, search. Uh, Kid is great and pass. Kid is going to be good because it will require them to have the 10 drop, which some Kaido decks run 10 drop, others do not. What do they have for three? Onigashima? They probably go Onigashima, pass, then we play Bonnie into Rosinante blocker. Yeah, that's fine. This is also good too. Uh, let's go five into face. Counter out. Bonnie. I think into a 2k. I think that's fine. And then we play down the blocker and pass. Oh, actually, Rosinante is going to be an MVP here because <laughs> once we play down the kid, it's going to be really hard for them to, to get rid of it. Like, the kid is going to be hard for them to get rid of. The KO effect is really uh, something we have to watch out for. Yeah, this, so when I talk about that Kaido got some support in OP07, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, this is a card called we're going to claim the one piece. It's a main if your leader has the animal kingdoms pirate or big mom pirates type Look at five cards from the top of your deck reveal up to one animal kingdom pirates or big mom pirates type card um, And add it to your hand So yeah, this is interesting because you can put it in Kaido you can use it to search out Onigashima Which finally Kaido gets a searcher for Onigashima This is also uh, when we get to OP08 We'll see play in pudding because pudding can grab a lot of things off of it Obviously, Kaido can grab a lot of things off of it as well. Reveal and draw Kaido promo. What is promo Kaido? I don't... What is promo Kaido? Uh, weird. I, don't, I actually don't know what promo Kaido is. Uh, is that the banish one? Or is that the one that like allows you to... Was it Ramp of Dawn? I honestly can't remember. I'm assuming they're countering out of everything because they have the 10 drop here. We're, bo <laughs> we're both at five life though. So we're kind of just like staring at each other. They, he's used his turn or they've used their turn to get rid of my Bonnies. Totally fine because I got 2k and a eight cost out of it. Not an issue here. And then if they start dropping stuff, yeah, if they drop this Kaido, uh, rest it. So they used 10 drop to get, I mean, a big body on the field. That's for sure. I guess we can go like, 
Uh, Cavendish. Uh, six. Right? Six into your Rouge. If they counter out of this, I'm going to be really happy. I'm going to be really happy. I want them to have no cards in hand. They are. Yes. Love it. Pass. Cool. Because if they have no cards in hand, if they have like very little cards in hand, what that means for me is I can actually, if I want to, swing in with the Doflamingo. We kind of want to take hits here. Use the card action. Rest. Uh, we'll take it. Sure. I mean, what are they going to be at here? Nine next turn? Yeah, let's just pass. I'm gonna. I wanted to swing in, but not, not yet. I don't want to swing in quite yet. I wanna. I want them to like hit my life. I don't want them to like hit my characters at all. I don't want that. We can also chain Bonnies to keep the Kaido down, which is really funny. Would they ever? Do you think there's a world where they ever just? Uh. Kaido to Kaido. <laughs> like they Kaido their own Kaido. That'd be really interesting if so. Okay, so this next turn, what we can do. Ooh, double. Double blockers. Uh what does that mean for us? This means. We can go here. go here they might have another kaido in hand they actually might <laughs> uh we'll go here let's see what they have i'm curious i'm curious what this one dawn is is it a blast breath Oh, what was it? What was the final card? Wow. That is, that is insane. Uh, well, we can get rid of one body at least. Cool. We're playing a very, very slow game here. Uh, let's use the card action. Rest. Take it. A second one? Oh, they top deck it? That's insane. That is actually insane. Okay, we'll just swing five. We'll go kid. And I think we can probably establish... Like if they go all in here, right? We can just block. They're at eight. Why would they, they ramped up for a reason. To use their ability? Huh. Okay, we'll do that. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's go here. One, two, three, four. Just get rid of it. 
Play this down. We'll go seven at lead. And pass. This is one of the benefits of Bonnie, by the way. You can just like starve out your opponent. The only problem is if they do play a bunch of 10 drop Kaidos, then yeah, it can be a problem. <laughs> this is a turn though where uh, because we have the two drop, we're like sitting pretty comfortably at least. They have the Bond Clay to be able to swing into this, which is really nice for them. But if they swing just a flat, like flat eight, it's a telltale sign that, okay, this is another 10 drop coming. That was actually an insane top deck, by the way. What was the promo, Kaido? If there are 10 Dawn on your opponent's board, this character cannot be KO'd. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Is this, uh, this is probably like the five cost event. Probably the five cost event, if I had to guess. Oh. Okay. Let's go here. Go five. Uh, let's play... Rouge? Go seven. I don't want to establish too much, to be quite honest. Like... 11 and 2 doesn't really matter uh, we didn't really have a like efficient dawn play I didn't want to also commit too much to the board in case this is like another 10 drop if we establish that like I don't want to have like all of my stuff go away I'd rather have like the bonnies in hand uh, as counter okay see yeah this is uh, not the worst thing in the world, right? This could be worse, I suppose. Like a 10 drop would be annoying, but yeah. So here, what we end up doing is if they swing here, we just rest their queen. I think we rest queen and then we just go in. Okay, and then we swing nine. Test the waters, see what they have. And then if they are countering out of this, it's like, it's pretty obvious what they have. And then we just put the rest on Cavendish and swing. 15. If they counter out of this, then geez, insane. Anyway, yeah, this was kind of an interesting matchup. Uh, I know that Kaido is definitely strong, stronger in OP07. I don't know if it's strong per se, but it's definitely stronger. Uh, the 10 board wipe into another 10 board wipe. Uh, was pretty insane. I They got a lot of value off of that. Good for them. So as you can probably tell, Bonnie's definitely going to be a great control deck uh, in its own way in 07. I think that if I were to change some things here off of this deck list, I don't know if this Bonnie needs to be ran as a full play set or even at all in the deck. I'm not quite sure. That's like up in the air for me right now. And I would want to bump up the Zoro, to be honest, a little bit more. You could also look to run the zero cost event, maybe put some one cost baby five searchers in if you want to like guarantee you can get the Doflamingo 10 drop. Uh, but this Zoro, we didn't see a single time uh, this evening, but uh, it's okay. I think that regardless, I think it definitely is a strong card that if we do see it, we're happy to see it, especially against the yellow. But I think as we saw tonight, the New Hawkins is probably one of the better cards in the deck just because it sticks. It's really hard for the opponent to remove it. And if you want, you can use it as an attacker uh, in the later stages of the game. And it's a great blocker. A 7,000 power body blocker is really hard for an opponent to swing past. So yeah, Bonnie's definitely one of those decks that I think will probably top at some events in the next couple of months. But I think it definitely will struggle against some of the more control-oriented decks. If you see decks... Like I said, like Luchi will definitely be problematic for Bonnie. Uh, and I think a lot of people will be looking to run Luchi. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this whole meta is like a rock, paper, scissors. So 
This deck might do really well against some decks, but struggle against others. And then the decks that it struggles against uh, might struggle against the decks it does well against. So everybody's kind of like in this triangle here. So yeah, overall 07 is looking pretty fun though. Cause it's like, it feels fresh. It feels a lot better than any of the previous sets, uh, at least as far as like a balance goes. So anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.